think television ratings are fascinating. The numbers, they remove all the excuses. The numbers remove any need for debate. When Bill Parcells was coaching in the NFL, he used to say all the time, you are what your record says you are. It's the same thing with ratings. The popularity, the impact of your show highlighted by your ratings. Now, that does not mean that excuses are not going to be made when ratings fail to meet expectations. Wednesday, when ratings were released for opening night of the NBA regular season, the usual excuses were already being made. It's cord cutting, it's competition, it's streaming, it's October, it's raining, it's climate change. Earlier this morning, I was reading through NBA forums on Reddit. Someone actually made the excuse that ratings no longer matter. Really? Really? Ratings don't matter, huh? That's like telling the promoters of the Butt Bongo Festival that the grilled wiener no longer matters. I mean, the wiener, that is the main event. It's the only reason dudes name Phoebe buy tickets. Go tell executives at TNT ratings don't matter. They are spending billions of dollars every year to broadcast the NBA. The only thing, I mean the only thing that matters to them is the number of viewers that the NBA draws to their channel, their platform. Now, there is some good news and there's also some bad news for the NBA. Good news is, this league is filled with young stars who have the potential to carry the league through the next generation. Now, of course, in order for them to do that, the league has to actually promote them. Bad news is, their old stars are starting to lose some of their drawing power. How long have I been saying that the NBA needs to move on from LeBron James? Now, that does not mean he shouldn't be featured on national television, doesn't mean that the Lakers have to be buried on regional networks every week, but it is time for the NBA to start heavily promoting these younger players. At 38 years old, with 39 knocking on LeBron's ass here in December, LeBron James is no longer the king of the NBA. Which, by the way, who crowned him king of the NBA in the first place? Isn't he the self-proclaimed king? The Lakers have 39 nationally televised games this season. Golden State Warriors, they've got 40. Half their fucking season is going to be broadcast nationally. My Pelicans, we've got 12. Spurs, 19. Two of your youngest potential superstars. They have almost the same amount of nationally televised games combined as the Lakers and the Warriors? Why? Why are you pushing the old over the new? Well, KC, the NBA can't rely on Zion Williamson. He can't stay healthy. Yeah, that is a, uh, that's a fair point. I can't argue with that. But that doesn't change the fact that you have other young stars in this league that continue to be overshadowed by LeBron James. But KC, that's because LeBron is a huge draw. Oh, yeah? <laughs> I know we're barely a week into the regular season, but LeBron James or the Warriors... Neither one has been the biggest draw in the NBA this week. We could actually be on the precipice of seeing a new king in the NBA. Now, if Zion Williamson can stay healthy, he's going to be the king of the NBA for the next decade. But there's another potential superstar who is capturing the attention of the mainstream. But before we get into that, into these NBA ratings, let's get to the sponsor for today's video, my friends over at Bumroll. There is something that every one of you are using every day that you never think about buying, unless, of course, you find yourself in one of those traumatizing situations when you actually need it and you come to the frightening realization that you don't have it, you're out of it. We've all been there before where we finish up, we're finally starting to feel a little bit better, then we realize we're out of toilet paper. I've got some good news for you today though. You never have to worry about running out of toilet paper again thanks to my friends at Bumroll. Now don't let the name fool you. We are not talking about the same bums who work in WNBA dumps across America. Unlike the dump divers in the WNBA, bum roll. They actually employ people who love this country. Every roll of toilet paper is 100% manufactured here in America, made in the USA with American hands and American materials. Every roll is 100% recycled, free of perfume, free of chlorine, free of plastic wrap. And if you purchase from Bum Roll, you are guaranteeing to keep American jobs secure. Now, unlike the pretenders who claim to care about the environment, who lecture you on your usage of fossil fuels while they're 
flying around in their private jets? Bum roll, they actually care about the environment. For every box of toilet paper sold, bum roll, they make a donation to plant a new tree. Now you can make a one-time purchase or you can get set up on a monthly plan, which will guarantee you never run out of toilet paper again. Click the link in the description below, or you can head over to joinbumroll.com right now. Use promo code 3BUX, 3BUX to save $3 off your first shipment. All right, ratings for opening night of the NBA season, they're not what I would classify as a huge embarrassing failure, but they damn sure weren't good. Season starts off with the Lakers in Denver to take on the defending champs. <laughs> now, obviously, the Nuggets were going to be involved in the first game of the season, but they are never going to be a draw nationally. The Nuggets, they're like the Milwaukee Bucks. Both are great basketball teams. They're both fun to watch, and they're both led by stars who are never going to appeal to the mainstream. Giannis and Nikola Jokic, they just, they just don't have the personality. Lakers Nuggets drew 2.8 million down 5% from last season. Second game of the doubleheader on TNT, Suns Warriors 2.7 million down 24% from last year. Overall, the two games averaged 2.8 million on TNT. They were down 16%. It was the least watched opening slate in nine years. Second least watched in the last 15 years. Question is, why? Why? The NBA playoffs last year, they were a huge success outside the NBA Finals, of course. NBA Finals continues to be a huge embarrassing failure. From 2010 to 2019, NBA Finals averaged almost 18 million viewers. Past four years, 10.3 million. Who was involved in two of those finals? Lakers, Warriors. I'm starting to wonder if there's just a little bit of fatigue from the casual fan base with the Lakers and Warriors. Seven or eight years ago, the rivalry between LeBron and Golden State, it carried the NBA for years, but after a while, you just get tired of seeing the same thing. And the players, they aren't doing themselves any favors. Over the past couple of years, Draymond Green has developed go-away heat with a portion of the casual fan base. Me personally, I can't stand when the Pelicans play the Warriors and we play them Monday night in New Orleans because I can't stand to watch Draymond Green. He's constantly whining. He's constantly barking at the officials. This dude, in my opinion, he is the luckiest player in the history of the NBA. If Draymond Green was drafted by the Charlotte Hornets or the Detroit Pistons, Casual fans would not know who the fuck he is. He would have been a journeyman bouncing around from team to team. Instead, he gets drafted by the Warriors and rides Steph Curry potentially into the Hall of Fame. Now, some people are claiming that ratings were low on opening night because of competition for Major League Baseball. Tuesday night was Game 7 of the NLCS between the Diamondbacks and Phillies. And to be fair, I'm sure that had some impact on NBA ratings, some, but... I don't think there was enough of an impact to make this the least watched opening night in almost a decade. The audience for the NBA is completely different than the audience for Major League Baseball. The NBA appeals to a younger demographic. Baseball, it just appeals to older people. I think part of the problem in the NBA, and I think this is especially true with some of the older star players, casual fans don't find them relatable. Seriously. When you think of NBA players, how would you describe them? Some people would say they're entitled. Some people would say they're lazy. I was watching that Lakers game the other night, Tuesday night. During the second quarter, LeBron James, he grabbed a rebound, drove the length of the floor for a wide open layup. You know how many times he was touched? You know how many times he was defended? None. Some NBA players, they treat the regular season like it just doesn't matter. Charles Barkley, he even called this out the other night on the broadcast. If the players don't care about the regular season, why the fuck should the fans? Now, to his credit, Adam Silver is trying to put more emphasis on the regular season. He implemented the in-season tournament this year. He made it a requirement for players to compete in 65 games to be eligible for the end-of-the-season awards. But what do the players want? They want fewer regular season games. <laughs> 
Let me tell you about the mentality of this generation of NBA players. Last night, the Lakers, they're playing the Suns. Once again, they're on national television. The Lakers, they have LeBron James on a minutes restriction. They only want him playing 30 minutes a night. Going into the fourth quarter, they are down by seven, maybe eight points. But there was just one problem. LeBron had already reached his restriction. After the game, LeBron James told the media what happened. He said head coach Darvin Ham approached him and said, Hey there, self-proclaimed king, my name is Darwin. I'm supposed to be your coach. We really, really need this win. I know you wanted to rest for a few minutes, but could you just do your job for me and win this game? After being asked to play, LeBron James, he fought through adversity. He fought through that need for rest, and he played the final five minutes of the game. My thing is, why did LeBron James have to be asked to play? Game on the line. Wouldn't you be demanding to play as the superstar on this team? This is why I say there is absolutely no debate between Michael Jordan and LeBron James. If the game is on the line, Michael Jordan, he wasn't sitting on the bench waiting to be asked to play. You couldn't pull him off the court. Like I said earlier, there is some good news for the NBA. There is a potential superstar in San Antonio that is capturing the attention of the mainstream, Victor Wimbanyama. The San Antonio Spurs, they have never been a draw nationally. Even during their dynasty, the Spurs, they couldn't attract flies to a fresh turd. But Wednesday night, Spurs, they're at home playing the Mavericks. First game of the season for ESPN. Three million viewers. This kid outdrew LeBron and Steph Curry on his first night in the league. Now, sure. Curiosity was a factor. People wanted to see what this kid could do. And we will see if the NBA promotes him going forward. But the time is now for the NBA to start pushing these younger stars. You've got De'Aaron Fox and DeMontis Sabonis in Sacramento. you got the rookie in San Antonio, Trey Young in Atlanta, Shea Gilgis Alexander in Oklahoma City, Zion and Brandon Ingram in New Orleans. It is time for the NBA to focus on the next generation of star players. LeBron James, this dude, this dude's my age. He's 38 years old. Seth Curry's what, 35? It is time for the NBA to start moving on. But give me your thoughts. Ratings for opening night of the NBA season. Lowest the league has seen in almost a decade. Give me your reason. Was it competition for Major League Baseball? Are casual fans getting tired of LeBron James and the Golden State Warriors? Is it time for the NBA to start focusing on the next generation? You let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe, share the video. I appreciate all you guys and your continued support. It means a lot to me. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. KC underscore BTL84 on Twitter. See you guys tomorrow.